Highness Prince uh, Carlo de Borbon, to Sicily's Duke of Castro and Grand Master, Her Royal Highness uh, Princess Camilla de Borbon, to Sicily's Duchess of Castro, His Grace, the Most Reverend uh, George Stack, uh, Archbishop of Cardiff and Sub Prior, His Excellency Ambassador Nobile Giuseppe Balboni, Aqua Secretary General of the Grand Magistry. His Excellency Ambassador of Colombia to the United Kingdom, Mauricio Rodriguez. His Excellency Mr. Anthony Bailey, Grand Magistral Delegate for Interreligious Relations and Delegate for the Great Britain and Ireland. Your Excellencies Ambassadors, Your Eminencies Archbishops, Minister of Finance of Colombia and the senior government officials, members of the Sacred Military Constantinian Order of St. George, special guests, Maria Clemencia and my son uh, Martin. I am deeply honored upon receiving the Knight Grand Cross with the gold star within the special category of the Sacred Military Constantinian Order of St. George. I gratefully receive this decoration granted to me by one of the world's most ancient and recognized orders, not in a personal capacity, but on behalf of 47 million Colombians who are building day by day a fairer and more prosperous country. I also speak on behalf of my wife, Maria Clemencia, our country's Minister of Finance and Defense, and our ambassador in London, who have also been decorated. Colombia recognizes the Sacred Military Constantinian Order of St. George as a very honorable institution which treasures the nobility and knowledge of centuries of history, which properly promotes humanitarian cha charity and spiritual activities. Its work in promoting the understanding between the world's religions is without any doubt preciously valuable for the world of today. Less than one month ago, I visited Rome, where His Holiness Pope Francis canonized the first Colombian saint, Ma uh, Saint Mother Laura Montoya. In his homily, the Pope Francis stated the following. This first saint, born in the beautiful Colombian soil, teaches us to embrace everyone without prejudice, without discrimination, without reluctance, with authentic love, giving them the best of ourselves. That is the spirit of the Constantinian order, as well as the spirit of what we're doing in our country. In Colombia, we are working every day and uh, without stopping to reduce poverty and to reduce inequality, closing those unbearable gaps between the wealthy and the poor, which cause society so much harm. This week and this past 24 hours for me has been especially stimulant. And yesterday I was in the University of Oxford uh, where they distinguished uh, Colombia for the achievements we have made in the last two years in our war against poverty and against inequality. Since the first day of my government, we uh, proposed ourselves to uh, establish the conditions for peace, not only by ceasing uh, the fire between the guerrillas and the government, do you attain and achieve peace. You need also to build an environment that will make this peace sustainable in the long run. And that's why, as a matter of policy, we started 
putting in place a very, very aggressive social uh, public policies that are today uh, fortunately uh, showing good results. Uh, yesterday at, uh, at the University of Oxford, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting also with the Professor Amir Sen, Nobel Prize winner, who is sort of the patron of the Institute of this University for Human Development and the Fight Against Poverty. Um, I was very happy to see Professor Sen. Uh, I'm probably one of the few students in his whole life who has been twice his student. First here in London, where I lived in the, in the 1970s, and I studied at the London School of Economics, and I was a student of Professor Sen. And uh, 15 years later, at the University of Harvard, I was again his student. And it was a matter of great pride yesterday uh, to see him uh, distinguishing Colombia uh, for the effort we've been doing to create better social conditions. Uh, I met with Prime Minister Cameroon, also the Foreign Secretary, uh, who both encouraged me to continue on the road to seek peace in my country and to try to reach an agreement uh, in Cuba with the guerrillas. And this uh, uh, declaration, what, what it does is to, it encourages us to continue. It's a hard work, it's a difficult road. I've been Minister of uh, Defense I have had to wage war, and uh, I can tell you, trying to achieve peace is much harder than waging war. Uh, we could have continued what we have been doing for the last 50 years, or for the last 10 years, or for the last five years, which is uh, giving orders to our generals to combat the guerrillas, and we've been quite successful. But I decided that every war has to end with a, some kind of negotiated solution, and that's why I took the step to initiate these uh, conversations, negotiations. We have been progressing, fortunately, uh, but I know that uh, there's still a long way to go. It's been difficult. Uh, cynicism with peace processes are, are, is a, a very easy attitude to take. Um, faith and optimism in the peace process is more difficult, but that's what I, ho what I have, faith and optimism. And uh, recognitions like I'm receiving today it was, is what encourages me to keep on going. <coughs> and we have made considerable uh, progress. Uh, in, in both sides, in the, in the uh, war against poverty and against inequality, and in the table in Cuba with the guerrillas. Uh, we can say now that in the last two years, 1,700,000 Colombians have overcome poverty, and most importantly, we broke a perverse trend that we've had for many years, many decades, where the Colombian economy grew, but inequality also grew. The richer became richer and the poorer became poor. We decided to break this trend and fortunately, uh, we can say that we have achieved this goal. Now Colombians with the lowest incomes are the ones who are seeing they're going to improve much more than the Colombians with the higher uh, incomes. And that's why we have been able to achieve such progress. And uh, in the conversations with the guerrillas in Cuba, we finished uh, the first, and I say the most important item in the agenda. Uh, we agreed on a, on a very um, ambitious uh, project to uh, invest in the rural areas of Colombia where the poverty and inequality is concentrated and we could do that because since the beginning we had a very progressive agenda. 
when I compared what the guerrillas were asking for for the last 50 years and what our program was, I discovered that there was many similarities. And thank God, we uh, achieved a, a partial uh, solution, uh, an agreement on, on this issue. Uh, the international community uh, has been very supportive of this process. In Colombia, also, the majority of the Colombians, of course, want peace. We are a country tired of war, more than 50 years of war. My generation has not uh, lived one single day of peace, and we are determined to uh, achieve that peace uh, in the best way possible. Um, finally, I want to simply share with you an anecdote now that we have mentioned uh, Mother uh, Laura Montoya, who was canonized. Um, my great uncle was president of Colombia uh, between 1938 and 1942. And he became a very good friend of uh, Mother Laura, today Santa Laura. Um, Santa Laura de Jericó. Jericó is the town where she was born. And uh, she, uh, at the end of the four-year term of my great uncle, was given the same decoration, which is the highest we have, uh, to Mother, um, to Mother uh, uh, Laura because of the work, of the marvelous work she had done for the most vulnerable people in Colombia, uh, especially the Indians and the Afro-Colombians. Uh, my great uncle kept uh, constant communication with her, and she was a tremendous and very useful source of information. And she had a very, a very big heart. And uh, when my great uncle condecorated her, uh, she said, uh, I don't deserve this decoration. Um, uh, others uh, are the ones who really deserve. Many people, and my mule, the mule, her mule was called Florence. And, uh, and, uh, and she, she, told, she scolded my great uncle and said, Mr. President, uh, not for me. It's for my mule and the people who are working with me. Uh, this shows her. Uh, her way of approaching uh, life, and uh, it was a great lesson. Um, that's why I say that uh, this decoration is not for me. I receive it in the name of all the Colombians, who are the ones who are really doing a big effort to change the country, a great country, a marvelous country that has lived so many years in war. And I am uh, determined, and the people of Colombia are all determined to reach that uh, state of uh, uh, that uh, objective that any society uh, wants is to live in peace and to create prosperity and that's what I want for for my country. I thank you very much your Royal Highness for this high distinction and I will always carry it with great pride my wife myself but in the name of all Colombians. It will be a precious memory of Colombia's friendship and ties with this historic order whose values and purposes we share. Now I would like to invite His Royal Highness Prince Charles of Borbon to Sicily, Duke of Castro, and Her Royal Highness Prince Camilla de Borbon to Sicily, Duchess of Castro, to receive with gratitude from Colombia the Grand Cross of the Order of San Carlos. This order of which I am Grand Master, is granted to those who merit the gratitude or the honors of the Colombian nation. For us, it is an honor, a great honor, and a great privilege to deliver it today to such distinguished personalities. Thank you very much.